In this part 4, we're going to export this wooden barrel, remodeled, UV'd, textured, and we're going to import it into UE4. Now, I already have the FBX exported when we did the export for Substance Painter, and I could use that FBX to import into UE4. However, just to keep it in the same video, I'm going to export this as a brand new mesh. And to do this, we're just going to go up to File, Export Selection. I'm going to make sure I set this to FPX export. I'm going to give it a name. And I'm actually going to save over the one that I had before. So I'm not going to name it. But if you were exporting this for the first time, you would name it. For the settings, go into geometry and make sure you have smoothing groups and smooth mesh enabled. And then you would hit export selection. And actually, let me go ahead and export this. I'm just going to overwrite the one that I have right here, wooden barrel. And export selection. And yes. All right, we export that mesh. Now we need to jump over to UE4 and begin to import the mesh and the textures from Substance Painter. In UE4, make sure you have a project to import into. So I already have my project launched and it is a third person template, but as long as you have any project that you can bring your assets into, that's enough. So I'm gonna start a new map. I'm not gonna import it into here. I'm gonna go to file, new level, and I'm gonna use the time of day. Now, first things I wanna adjust I don't want to use the lighting and kind of that outer exposure that happens right away. Uh, I'm going to actually adjust and actually remove the outer exposure that happens inside the scene. This is uh, quite annoying and it's the, well, probably one of the first things you want to do. So you don't get brightness inside the shadows and where it's too bright and too dark where your eyes begin to adjust. So I'm going to go to visual effects, post process volume, drag that into the scene. And there are three settings I need to enable. First, I'm going to search for unbound. Make sure that this process volume is universal so I don't have to be inside it for it to take effect. And then I'm going to search for brightness. And I'm going to enable minimum and maximum brightness under exposure. And then set both of those to one. So you can already see we removed our auto exposure. Now our scene is very dark. I'm going to go ahead and adjust my light, select the directional light, and I'm going to increase the intensity. One is too low. 3.14 is a good default to start with and then you can go up or down uh, depending on what you need. Uh, I'm not going to adjust any color. Uh, that's it. That's all I need. All right. In uh, content browser, we might want to start organizing our content a little bit more. So I already have a folder that I'm going to bring in the, some of the wooden assets into. And here I already have a map and a test folder and so on. Uh, usually you create a couple of folders. One for textures that you're going to bring into, one for materials, and one for static meshes. Now, for the sake of uh, testing this out, you could just simply bring them all into one folder, but then if it is part of a project, then there, it's going to get very disorganized. So let me go ahead and create these three folders real quick. So one is going to be static mesh. The other one is going to be textures. So I'm right-clicking the empty space, and then go into new folder. And then let's click one more time. And new folder, and it's going to be materials. So I'm going to go in the static meshes folder. And here I'm going to bring in the static mesh. Here's the static mesh FBX. I'm simply going to left click hold and drag and drop it into whatever folder I want. There's going to be a menu that pops up and we need to just go through the settings. So I'm going to let me reset everything to default. So first, generate missing collisions. This is enabled by default and I do, I did not create custom collisions for this. So I want UE4 to generate them for me. So that way the player can interact with them. I'm going to leave everything at default. Another option that you want to kind of take a look at is generate light map UVs. This way UE4 will generate a second UV light map channel. So this mesh can be used in with static lighting. Currently we did not create a second UV map channel in Maya. So what this will do is will take your texture UV channel and it will copy it over and use it for the UV light map channel. So if you want to have this done for you automatically and you think it will work, just go ahead and keep this enabled. Depending on the object, some of the texturing UVs may not work very well with the light map UVs. So there's quite a few considerations you have to take, such as overlapping shells and how you slice them up. But for the barrel, it's a cylindrical object and for the most part, it will work pretty good with what we have already. Then I'm going to scroll down and under materials, I do not want to create a new material. 
but you can go ahead and keep this. This will basically use the mesh name and create a material and assign a constant value for color, for the base color. So it just saves you a few clicks. I'm going to go ahead and not create the material and create our own from scratch. And then I do not want to import textures. All right, let's go ahead and import. And here's our mesh. Let me double click, open up static mesh editor and just take a look at the mesh. Let's take a look at the UVs. I'm going to use the drop down menu, select UV channel zero. Those are the texture in UVs. And let's take a look at the light map. So light map UVs are always going to be in UV channel one. Texture in UVs are always going to be in UV channel zero. So this basically took and repacked them in a different way for the light map and uh, it should work. UV channel 1, the light map UVs are only for if you're going to use this mesh with static lighting and build your lights. If you're using dynamic lighting, light map channels do not matter. I also want to check one more thing to make sure that the light map coordinate index, it's, it is set to 1. It basically will tell Unreal Engine 4 that the light map channel is in UV channel is, uh, 1 instead of 0. So I just need to go through the settings and find it. And uh, let me search for it. Light map coordinate index and it is set to one. So that's correct. And it's pointing to the right channel. So that's good. I just want to double check and you four did that for us. Otherwise, you may have to set this manually if you are importing your own self-created light map channel in the second UV channel. Let's go ahead and click save. And I'm just going to drag it into our level. All right, so our mesh is in here. Next, we need our textures and then create a material. I'm going to select the textures folder. And I'm going to find our textures. We exported it in the last part, part three. Here they are. I'm going to left click, hold and drag all three and drop them into the content browser. One of them will get imported and converted into a normal map. So we don't need to do anything for that, which is great. The one texture that we do have to do something with before we can use it is the packed texture. So this is where you have three different textures packed into each individual color channel. The red, the green, and the blue for ambient occlusion, for roughness, and for metallic. So I'm going to double click on that, open up texture editor, and we need to disable sRGB. This is very important that you do this. And I recommend doing it before you bring them into the material editor. Otherwise, you just have to do a couple of extra steps within the material editor to adjust it. So it's just easier to do it now. Disable it and then save. All right, now we have our textures. Let's go ahead and create a material. Go to material folder. I'm going to right click in the empty space and go to material. I'm going to name it. I'm going to name it MAT for a prefix of material and name it wooden barrel. You can name this anything you want. I like to assign a prefix. Then I'm going to double click on it and open it up. It's going to be an empty material, nothing in it. We can now use those textures that we imported. Let's go back into that folder. I'm going to grab all three. Left click, hold, then drag. And let's position them better. Let's go ahead and connect them up. So the RGB from your base color goes into base color of the material. The normal map RGB goes into the normal map input. The packed texture, the red channel is your ambient occlusion. Remember the acronym ARM, RGB, ARM for ambient occlusion, roughness, metallic. So the green channel goes into roughness and the blue channel goes into metallic. Let's go ahead, save. Let me close this. And now we can apply our texture onto the mesh. So there are two ways to apply in the texture or actually the material. We actually don't apply textures onto any meshes. We use them inside the material editor, but then we apply the material onto our assets. So the two ways are you can just simply take the material and left click hold and drag and drop it onto the mesh. The other way is to assign it universally. And that is to go into the static meshes, double click on it, and then you can assign to the asset itself, and then it will be used everywhere you use this asset in. And you can just right here on the world grid material, that's the default setting. You would just simply take your material 
and drop it in here. And it will be applied. So let me go ahead and maximize this and take a look at our barrel. All right, everything's looking pretty good. Exactly how we saw it in uh, Substance. To get a little bit more uh, light in the shadows and the indirect light areas, we can adjust our skylight and increase its intensity. So again, because we're just using a default template scene with uh, just an adjustment of post-process volume, you know, we haven't tweaked any lights. So you would have to set up your scene and your lighting to use uh, with whatever you, uh, your environment is. But if you wanted to get a little bit more light in the indirect light areas, skylight adjustment intensity 1.5 maybe, get a little bit more indirect light areas to light up. Let's go ahead and maybe duplicate this a couple of times. Maybe duplicate it at the top, so we'll hold down Alt. And the way we built this, it's going to snap nicely to the grid and it's going to align with every other mesh, uh, the, uh, the wooden barrel that we position it on. So that was done on purpose uh, because we used whole values. So that was definitely something that we kept in mind as we modeled this. If you want to make these meshes uh, more dynamic, so let's say if, uh, if I spawn into the map, just walk around. If I touch them, they won't move. If I want to make them uh, dynamic and have physics, we can do this per mesh. You can, we can just sele simply select. And I'm going to select them all, hold down control, uh, do multiple selection. And then if we go into the properties, we can enable simulate physics. Now we can't do anything right now because these meshes are not dynamic, they're static. Uh, actually, no, they are dynamic. Yep. So right here in the properties, they are all set to movable. So they're not static anymore, they are dynamic meshes. Let me come back. And then so once all these meshes have been changed to movable, and then you simulate physics, you can adjust kind of their, um, their weight by changing the mass in kg. And I think 126 is enough because that's actually how heavy or that's how they feel when you spawn. So let's take a look at what that does. So when you walk around and you bump into them, they do feel like uh, heavy barrels, just maybe empty. But that's how you get dynamic physics on your newly created assets. So that is it. That is it for the entire series. We went from modeling to UVing to creating the texture and then bringing everything into Unreal Engine 4 and making it into a playable and usable asset that you can bring it into any game environment in any level and use it. There are of course many other things you can do with this mesh inside the material editor. You can set up material instances so you can adjust maybe color and uh, quite a few other properties in the way that how this wooden barrel will look. So you can have uh, various instances of the same mesh, but they will look slightly different. You can also set up maybe vertex painting uh, and change some of the properties like you, you would be able to paint like a darker color to give an illusion maybe of dirt piling up on the bottom using the information from the vertices and applying kind of a, like a painting color on them. So you have quite a lot of variety that you can still introduce to make each a single each wooden barrel stand out and make it a little bit different so it's not exactly the same. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial series and I will see you in the next one.